Hi, it's Sunday night, the 13th of December and day 347 of my journey to business alignment. Today's Living the Dream experience was to take around a fun gift for our neighbors for Christmas with my wife. Of course, I was wearing a mask and so was she, and we went around wishing all our neighbors Merry Christmas. There were times in my past years ago when I could only go around singing carols with my guitar with my family and hand them a card due to a low budget. It is truly a live in the dream experience to be able to afford doing that this year. It's just a marvelous, marvelous thing. Anyway, my power statement for this morning said, I'll do all I can to sharpen my saw. And so here's the to-do list that I had for this morning. Very short, fun things. I'll talk about what I did. My number one most important task for today was to write up a letter and prepare it for Micah, who's a gal at the Avalon Care Center, so she can print them off and hand it out. I send it to her a file, she prints it out and goes around and gives it, since we're blocked from having to go in there and being able to go in to see those wonderful friends that I have. My fun task for today was to study with Kathleen and enjoy some Hallmark holiday movies with her. Again, a couple tonight it was fun. And my exciting task for today was to write up and then type up my Christmas shopping list. It's a secret. I love this time of year. I'm grateful that I am retired and Kathleen is working from home and has a five second commute to and from work. So great. It's nice that we're together every day, all day long. To have an entire month to prepare and enjoy this season has been wonderful. And here's the uh, my end of the day success routine questions. Get honest with yourself, Marty. What didn't go well today or what could you have done better today? Did you wake up early and start strong? Check. Did you start your morning with power? Win the day, uh, every day, win the morning, win the day routine? Absolutely. Were you productive throughout your day? Yes, I was. You saw those little lists, but it was a different kind of productivity. It's preparing myself for Monday by sharpening my saw and relaxing and feeling renewed. Did you get the most important things done? Yes, yeah, sharpen my saw. Got it done. I'm going to be fantastic for tomorrow. Did you move your goals forward? My intellectual goals, my association goals with Kathleen, and those kind of things, doing video chats with my children, absolutely did. Did you move those goals forward like you wanted to? I did. Did you show up as the person you wanted to? I showed up as a person that would serve the better me today. Absolutely. What about your personal time with your wife, Kathleen? We spent the whole day together. It was great. She was present for me, and I was present for her. Next are the end of the day uh, success routine accountability questions that I ask myself every day. Were you honest with yourself about today's task, Marty? Another word, did you keep your promises that you made to yourself? Once again, with it being Sunday, I simply promised myself that I would spend the day relaxing and sharpening my saw, which is exactly what I did. It includes spending time with Kathleen, and I kept those promises to myself. Bam, done. By the way, it's been a while since I showed a picture of my wife, Kathleen. So here it is. Let me take a minute and show you something here. Get it up closer. Isn't she lovely? My goodness, 44 years with Kathleen. I just can't believe it. I'm going to lay that down and not do that anymore. Anyhow. And the next question is, what movies did you watch during your mindfulness time today, Marty? Did you make time for them? And were there any new instant pre-play movies that your two amigos called up to the screen of your mind? Well, every morning I take a few minutes to watch my must-see TV favorite five movies. And this morning was no different because it was Sunday morning. I knew Kathleen and I were going to watch a couple of videos about Christmas and then some with the beautiful landscapes and the choir singing in the background as we go throughout the world and just beautiful. So I didn't want to watch any instant pre-play movies right then. My next question says, what's the one thing that would make all the difference going forward? What one thing can I do better starting tomorrow? Even if the day goes sideways, getting it done, you'd still feel like a success. Well, for my Monday, I'm going to focus on finishing all the remaining tasks that need to be done before the website can go live. And then I'm going to ask Fahad to turn it on. Make it go live, Fahad. There will still be several things that I still need to do with it, but I think it can go live tomorrow and not have any problems. At least that's my hope. And so the most important thing for me to do is to stay focused and not be distracted. So again, here's my power statement for tomorrow. 
going forward. I will finish the next few tasks at the top of my Ontoport to-do list. And once I check that one off, I will keep going and do the next task in line one at a time, time after time, until either the list is done or until I ran out of time for the day. Well, the next question for my end of the day success routine ask myself, were there any mistakes or failures that you can turn into a tool of success today, Marty, going forward? Well, today was a Sunday, and so my relaxing and sharpen the day was fantastic. So it's pretty hard to make a mistake at doing that, don't you think? So no failures today. It was a fantastic day, and boy, am I ready for tomorrow. I need to get to sleep though. And so I just will say this, that I've set the table perfectly for tomorrow for it to be a success. The next question is, what was your biggest success today, Marty? In other words, what did you do well today? Well, my biggest success today was setting that, uh, was getting that table set for tomorrow and doing all that I've done to make it so that it, it, I start strong, I stay strong, and I end strong. And ending the day strong really does set the table for a day to be successful. I'm refreshed, or at least I will be when I get my sleep in, and I know exactly what I'm going to do tomorrow, and I'm speaking it into existence, what I want to have happen, so tomorrow's going to be a successful day, period. My next end-of-the-day success routine is to ask myself, and rate my day's effort. And so I decided to give my day's effort a 10. I relax at the speed of 10, and it was a terrific day. Okay, I want to end the day strong. Here's what I'm grateful for for today. Today I'm grateful for the principle that says, imagine your goals vividly again and again and again and again. Now that we've decided on what uh, and, and, you know, we have uh, set goals that we truly feel inspired by and that drive us forward with momentum. We've got to make them so compelling that they feel real to us and feel real in our nervous system, in our mapping. How do we develop that ironclad sense of certainty? Well, first, we clear away any roadblocks by figuring out up front what could possibly prevent us from moving forward with them and deal with them right now rather than 50 miles down the road? Too many of us worry about something happen and we sabotage ourselves because uh, we, so we're trying to make all the lights be green from here to the full city away. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you're going to worry word about it, let's decide what the worst can happen and deal with it so you can go forward. That's what I'm saying. Then we need to make commitments to people we know who will hold us to our higher standard. That's what a coach is for. That's what a great friend does. Next, we need to reinforce our new neural pathways, the new mapping we've set into motion by setting the goal and repeating it over and over again by continuous rehearsal, what I call going to the movies daily. With repetition and emotional intensity, it burns that path down in our mind and it makes the other one atrophy. That's what happens. Like I said, imagine your goals vividly again and again and again. These principles lead to the next thing that I'm grateful for, which is the law of ultimate success, which says a compelling future creates a dynamic sense of growth. Without this, we're only half alive. A compelling future is not an accessory, but a necessity. It allows us not only to achieve, but to partake of the deep sense of joy contribution and growth that gives meaning to life itself. Man, oh man, that's ultimate success. This leads me to the next thing I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for Solomon, who said in Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. It's astounding to me to think about the number of people in this country who die within three years of retiring. It proves that Solomon was right. If you lose the sense that you are producing or contributing in some way, you literally lose the will to live. And that is, you do have a reason. So you have to have a reason to hang in there, in other words. In fact, studies have found that elderly or ill people who are close to death often hang on until just after the holidays. As long as they had something like Christmas and the family visit to look forward to, they had a reason to live. But after that holiday passes, they have no compelling future. For example, in China, the death rate drops right after before and during major festivals and picks up again as soon as the festivals are over. It doesn't matter if you're either 18 or 80. We still need something to drive us forward. 
the inspiration we all seek is found within us, waiting to be called upon by an unforeseen challenge or an inspired request. Kentucky Fried Chicken's Colonel Sanders found it at age 65. When his meager Social Security check arrived, his anger drove him to action. We don't have to wait for an event like COVID-19, for example, to make us get after it in order to have that motivation and be inspired to do something about it. We can design our success. We can design it. George Burns, I don't know if you'll remember him, but he was the comic, the old comic that with the, had the cigar, stood on stage and made people laugh. Well, he understood the importance of a compelling future. He said, you have to have something to get out of bed for. I can't do anything in bed anyway. The most important thing is to have a point, a direction that you're headed for. Well, at age 104, George was still letting himself be booked for gigs. And let's leave it right there tonight. I'm a little bit tired stumbling here. Now. That's okay. That's what I love to do. It's my daily evening video journal entry that I'm recording and going to put up on YouTube. And I hope you enjoy it like I do. I'll be back here at my laptop sharing my feelings once more every day, every day, every day. But until then, I wish you continued success. Good night.